You're watching Tim Topham TV, the piano teaching podcast, and this is episode number 39. Hi everyone and thanks so much for watching again this episode of Tim Topham TV. Whether you're watching it on YouTube and having a look at the video of the interview or you're listening on iTunes while you run or shop or drive the car, thank you very much for tuning in. It's great to be in your earbuds today uh, and I look forward to sharing some great ideas with you as usual. Now today my special guests are Tracy Selly and Sarah Campbell and these guys are going to be continuing on the theme of summer camps that we started last week on the blog and on the podcast. So today we're going to be talking much more specifically about a whole lot of themes and games and places online that you can find great ideas for kicking off your summer camp or developing it down the track. So whether you're about to do this um, over in the Northern Hemisphere for summertime in the middle of the year or whether you're going to be listening to this a bit later in the year and planning for, like in Australia here, a December-January summer camp, um, the ideas here are going to be setting you up to hopefully avoid a whole lot of mistakes and just get things right from the beginning without wasting a whole lot of time and energy. So we're going to be talking a lot about uh, some great uh, themes um, and ways of structuring your camp. We're going to be talking a little bit about scaling uh, your camp to a certain extent. We're going to be talking about marketing and mistakes to avoid, all sorts of things like that. And um, I'm really happy to have had the chance to speak with Tracy and Sarah because these guys know their stuff and they work together. They bounce ideas off each other. It's great fun um, hanging out. So here's my interview with Tracy and Sarah, all about fun piano camp themes and games. Oh, girls, it's so good to have you both on the show. We had uh, some delightful technical issues when we tried to record this last time, but I think, fingers crossed, we're all good. Welcome to the show. Great to have you both here. Thank you. We're excited. Yes, um, thanks so much for having us back again. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. And look, it's, uh, I mean, Tracy, we've, uh, we've been in touch for quite a while. I you know, know a lot about what you're doing. But uh, Sarah, I've only just got to know you more recently as you've been starting to work with Tracy on some of your webinar programs. Um, and then I found out more about your blog and the amazing things you're doing. So I'm really uh, honored to have both of you guys here on the show today because you are doing such great things for piano teachers around the world. So um, yeah, really kudos to you guys. It's awesome <laughs> oh it's good to hear that you that you enjoy the stuff that we're putting out there because that's what it's all about you know helping other teachers so thanks that's exactly yeah you're welcome well look how did you guys come to be working together because i know you're not in the same state even i don't think <laughs> we're not we need to be we need to get together for lunch sometime <laughs> um we start well you know I, I did started the webinar project about a year ago and uh, that was how i met sarah i contacted her just like i contacted you when i wanted you to be on there but i guess sarah and i had sort of been friends um in some of the facebook groups so we had gotten to know each other then and i knew i wanted her on that webinar and when i decided that we were going to put together this one about group lessons and summer camps I knew I wanted Sarah to join me as a co-host because I thought, oh, that'll be fun, something different. And she said yes, and it has been a blast, way more fun than doing it by myself. So yeah, I'm absolutely. glad you joined me, Sarah. <laughs> I was so excited. Um, doing the first webinar was just so much fun. And then when I got the email from you asking if I wanted to do a collaborative project, I was like dancing around the house. I was so excited um, because we, we just have uh, such a good uh, our, our back and forth, the way that we work, even though it's all online, which can be difficult sometimes, you know, um, but everything that we've done is just so much fun and we really push one another um, to excel, which is great. Mm. Well, look, tell us a little bit about this, your studios, your current teaching, um, sort of just very quickly, how many kids, um, what kind of ages sort of thing? Maybe Sarah first. Okay. Um, my youngest right now is six and my oldest, I teach adults that are, you know, retired and, and, you know, piano is like a new hobby for them. I have like, this is my studio behind me this is where I am. Um, and I have about 40 students right now. Okay. And you teach from home or is that a separate studio somewhere? No, this is a separate studio. So. All right. Cool. All right. And Tracy? Okay, and my setup has changed a lot in the past year uh, because we moved. So I kind of had to start over from scratch. And it's a really different setup. I like it, but it's very different. I have uh, two kids or two families that come to my house. And one of those is my youngest. He's four. 
which is interesting. That's yeah. been a new venture for me. And then I have seven Skype students from my when my old town. Um, one of those is my oldest. She is a sophomore in high school. I have had adults, but right now I don't have an adult. And then I've got the rest of my studio is at a local school. So it's kind of a hodgepodge, but it's kind of nice to have something different. It's very different than having all these families come into the house. So mm. yeah, that's how I look now. So I have 20 right now. Great, great. I, I also think, because I work in schools as well as at home, it, it, is, it breaks things up because you're doing all sorts of different things and you're doing some accompanying sometimes. And um, it, oh, yeah. Because it can be very isolating and very repetitive too, just to be in your own home, particularly over and over the right. same time, every yeah. week. Yeah. And it was a little scary kind of venturing out, trying something new, but um, moving forced me to do that. And I was so excited that first day, my husband was laughing at me because I was like, I'm going to work and I've been working forever, but it's different going to one part of the house as opposed to getting in your car and driving and yeah. it's been fun. Yeah. It's right. an adventure trying to figure it all out again. And your goal, it will be to sort of build it up to about where Sarah is, so sort of 30 to 40 students, or are you kind of happy where you are at the moment? I had 30 when we moved, and I really like that. That was mm. a good number. Um, I don't want much more than 30 right now. Um, my son's in high school, yeah. and I really want to enjoy the time with him. But in a couple of years, he's going to be out, and so then I'll probably take more. But yeah. he comes first right now. And my husband. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> of <Okay>. course. <laughs> All right, yeah, so let's, well, let's talk summer camps. This is summer camp month on the blog, uh, and I want to help as many teachers as possible um, with how they could do this if they you know, are interested in it. So can you each tell us um, what, uh, if you're running summer camps at the moment um, and what they look like? Well, I am going to be running three summer camps this year. Uh, I have two piano camps. Uh, one of them is for my littler ones. It's like 6 to 14, and I'm doing a Hogwarts uh, Harry Potter-themed music camp. Um, and that's outdoors, so that's going to be real interesting. I have a bunch of helpers coming, um, or professors, if you want to call them that. Um, I have, and then my older piano camp is ages 10 to 18, and I am doing a pop rock workshop. Um, and we are going to be working on the four chord song phenomenon and we're going to be learning them in all kinds of different keys and I'm actually bringing in some professional musicians uh, to work with the kids during the camp. Fantastic, sounds great. How, uh, how's outdoors, how does that work with pianos? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so for the outdoor uh, camp, I do have a really cheap digital keyboard that somebody gave me years ago and I do haul that out there um, but for the most part the activities that we do out there the games don't require a keyboard right okay all right we're going to come back to some of those games a bit later um, Tracy what about you what are you doing or what are you planning okay no summer camps planned for me this summer yet but and the reason for that, again, is my setup. My, the two families that I have come to the house, I can't put them together because a four-year-old is not going to work with any um, of the other camps. But my um, the kids that I have at school, I don't have a lot of interaction with their parents, but we have a recital coming up in two weeks. So I'm hoping there are four girls there that are really good friends, and I'm hoping that we can work something out. But right now, I don't have it planned. So cool. hopefully I'll be able to kick it into high gear and have a little mini camp. Um, I talk in, in our webinars that um, I don't do well with giant camps where there are a lot of kids. And I found what works better for me is a smaller group, even duet camps. Duet camps are my favorite. Not a big money maker, but I enjoy it a lot. Mm, yeah, and I, and I think that's great to, to you know, remind everyone that they, when we're talking summer camps, we don't have to be talking about something with 50 kids. It can work yeah. just as well with four, two, whatever it is. It's just about the outcome of the camp, I guess. So let's And finding what works for you. And yeah. and it took some trial and error, but that's just my personality. I work better with smaller groups. Yep. Yep. So let's actually talk about the why of summer camps. You know, why, um, Sarah, why are you putting all this effort in? You're working out themes, you're getting three different camps on the go. Why do you feel <laughs> it's so valuable? Um, for me, it's it's my way to keep my business really running in the summertime. You know, I, like most piano teachers out there, I have to work year-round. I can't just stop working in the summertime. Um, so the camps give me an opportunity to um, balance out the way I do my scheduling because I allow my students to, to go on a lighter schedule during the summer. Right. Um, 
and and then I also offer these camps and I get a deal where if if you don't do a camp you have to do X number of lessons and it's like a greater number and if you do do a camp then you do smaller number of lessons so it creates like this really nice steady income um, across the board in June, July, and August. So I'm not scrambling like at the end of August because I can't pay my bills. Yeah, absolutely. So you actually continue teaching through summer as an additional thing. So the summer camp's an additional thing. You continue teaching. And if students aren't able to attend or don't want to attend the summer camp, then they're expected to do more lessons than if they do. Is that right? Right. But it's not that many more lessons. It's actually only eight lessons over a period of three months. So they can take off. I mean, they're taking off basically an entire month. Right. Okay. Uh, it, all these different kind of scheduling ideas I really love because um, Jennifer Fox, who was on the last episode, was talking about how she actually makes it compulsory in her studio. So if you're a student of hers, you're expected to attend the summer camp. And if you start umming and ahhing about it, she goes, well, I'm sorry, it's part of your tuition. You can't learn with me anymore. You're going to the um, the waiting list, um, the bottom of the waiting list too. And she actually <laughs> emailed me just the other day after we recorded it saying she actually just had a family um, ask her about this and she kept her foot down and lo and behold, they signed up for the summer camp sort of thing. So I'm interested to know you because I hadn't heard this. I'd never sort of considered it as a compulsory thing. Um, how do you find the numbers work when – for example, what you're doing, it isn't compulsory. And how do you get the students along and the parents to support it? Because it's obviously extra cash too. Right. Um, well, if it's not a compulsory thing, then it needs to be a super fun, amazing, awesome thing that the kids are going to be so psyched to sign up that there's no question. Um, hence Hogwarts, like Hogwarts camp. I have a max of 15. I've got 12 enrolled right now. So, and I have like a month, no, two months before it even happens. So mm -hmm. it'll max out. Yeah. And how do you come up with the number 15 for your camp, that camp? Um, I have one, one, no, no, let's see. I have three helpers coming throughout the week. One of them will be with me all, at all times. Um, so we will be able to split the group into like seven and eight. And that's about the maximum that I can personally control. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like Trace, Tracy. I kind of prefer like a little bit smaller. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you say 15, and I'm just going. I would go bonkers. <laughs> I could not handle that. I just could not handle that. But there's a reason God made me an only child, and I have an only child. <laughs> um, yeah. But anyway, but you have helpers, so it's not like it's just you I with do. 15. I do have yeah. helpers. You have and, a plan. Um, I have a I have a lot of people coming in to help in. Uh, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. Where do you find your helpers? Actually, the helper that I have this year is a former student of mine. Um, I teach voice in addition to piano. And this was a voice student of mine. She actually is going to be a, oh my gosh, she's getting up there. She's going to be a sophomore um, in college now as a music ed major. So she is the perfect candidate to come back. This is kind of like an internship, actually. We trade for lessons. Uh, okay. So she comes in and she teaches with me for a week um, and then she gets some free lessons out of the deal. What a great idea. I really like that. That's a great concept for, for past students or sort of university age students. That's brilliant. Yeah. Tried some and pedagogy lessons. Tim, I was just also going to say too, um, several of the guests in our webinar, they talk about how some of just getting some of your current students to be volunteers, but also even parents asking, you know, it, now, not necessarily with any type of music things, but just to have an extra pair of hands on, maybe you could give them a discount uh, for coming, but it's something like that. You can get them to help out as well. Mm, absolutely. So in your the webinars that you um, had with all these different teachers running summer camps, what are some of the ways that they actually schedule their days, did you find? Like what, what kind of times do they start, finish, do they have lunch? What, what, what goes on? Was, was well, there any standards or was everything completely different? Oh, it was so different, wasn't it? It was. It, when, when you talked about lunch, the first thing that stood out in my mind was when, um, and actually this came from Sarah, I think, saying um, that she, a lot of times she just has the kids bring their own lunch. And because so many camps, you know, wherever you go, you're used to, you just pack up the lunch for the kid. But how that is um, one thing off the teacher's back. It's like, okay, now I don't have to worry about that. And I think mm -hmm. if you're new to camps, that's an idea that 
now that's one thing that's off your plate if you are going to have a longer camp. But some of the teachers talked about they would have all day camps and some just did probably what, two to three hours, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I tend towards the shorter camps, um, uh, mainly because, you know, especially if you're if you're only teaching, like if you're the only teacher there and you have eight students, two hours is a long time to be in control of those eight students doing a lot of activities. And then that's good enough for me because we're going to get 10 hours throughout the week doing five days mm-hmm. um, for the longer ones. Uh, like I do a five hour a day camp and that's with older kids. We do have a break for lunch. Um, so we would do like most of the time we do two hours in the morning. We'd take a half hour to 40 minute break and then resume and finish out the rest of the day. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't have to be, you know, a, a massive catered residential um, overnight <laughs> multi-day <laughs> thing, does it? It can really be a couple of hours in your home, in your normal studio, a couple of hours um, with some kids that are enjoying it with a cool theme and doing some different things. That's what. And I think, yeah, and I think if for teachers that are just starting off, you do need to go shorter because my first camp, I didn't do that. I thought, okay, I actually wrote about this in the Piano Bench magazine. I thought, okay, um, I can create my own plan and I'm going to have all these students and we're going to, and it was an all day thing. It was like I lost my mind. Um, (laughs) It was, it was way too much too soon. And I learned so much from it. And the Mm. kids had a blast. I mean, they had a wonderful time. They didn't realize how stressed out I was. But for teachers that are new to it, I think shorter is better. And once you get a feel for that and how it goes, then you can build off of it. But it does not have to be this long, huge thing. You can still have a lot of success with a short camp and Mm. still make money if that's your goal. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so I'm interested to know some of the cool creative things that the other teachers or you yourselves have done and the other teachers that you interviewed have been doing. You know, let, let's actually talk some, some cool ideas that teachers can use now. For like summer, uh, summer camp themes? Yeah, so either themes or actual okay. activities now, I guess. Um, okay, so I've already talked about the Hogwarts theme, but Tracy, uh, what about Cheryl Wells' um, Marooned on Music? No, the Marooned on Musicians Island theme. Okay, all right. Talk tell us, about, tell that. Us about that. Um, you love Cheryl. Oh Sarah was so excited to interview Cheryl because she has just been a big fan idol. of hers. <laughs> and she has a lot of really good ideas. She was an excellent addition. Yeah. Her, her blog is amazing and just so many pictures of her kids doing activities so you can really get a sense of what a camp could look like. Mm. And um, she I'll has a link a, to her blog on there because it is, yeah. I think I've linked up once more, but uh, once before, but it's very good. Yeah. It is. It, and the, she has this, this new camp that came out this year called Marooned on Musicians Island. And it's kind of like a mystery camp and you have to achieve, like, I think the idea is you have to get off of the island. Um, I just got the camp materials. I haven't had time to look them over yet, but I was looking at all the pictures from her camp that she ran last year. Um, and it looked amazing. Like, not only did she have a summer theme, like a camp that you can purchase for that, she has an incentive program that's year round. So you're building up to that camp starting like at the beginning of the school year and you're talking about it and you're doing the whole Musicians Island thing. And then in the summertime, they actually get to experience it as part of the camp. Right. What a great idea for sort of continuity and building up uh, excitement. Really nice idea. Yeah, it's a, it's a good marketing strategy. It really, yeah. you know, I mean, she has worked throughout the year to build that. It's yeah. a good idea. And looking here at my notes, you know, something else in our, um, we have a, a a webinar group on Facebook, and a lot of people are talking about Minecraft. Oh yeah. Several, yeah, because Minecraft is so big and so wanting to put together Minecraft. Now, I don't think anyone, or Sarah, I don't think you have you seen anyone that actually has a plan for Minecraft. I think they're kind of the teachers are doing it on their own. But they're they've coming got the, up with stuff. Graphics. I think. Yeah, Emily came up with an amazing graphic with the piano in the background, and somebody else did too. Uh, so Minecraft seems to be a big, a big theme this year. So you better, um, you better just think. remind us about Minecraft, what what it is for teachers that don't know. It's some kind of should computer I game, I know son? that. I, I should go get Matthew. <laughs> yes, it's a computer game, and it's all about blocks and building, and it is just the hot thing now. It right. is it is the hot thing, is Minecraft, yeah. 
Um, would that appeal to the younger, sort of the six, seven, eight year olds, or is this more a teenage camp one? No, it's the whole spectrum. Yeah, it's right. a lot Everybody. of younger kids yeah. and girls, boys and girls. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, if if they're into any type of gaming, any type of thing like that, they know and they love. And yes, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Now you said so. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, go on. Did you have? Were there any others that came to mind? Any other kind of uh, theme ideas? I guess firstly. I think um, a lot of people are talking right now about like pop, you know, pop music and, and things like that to uh, as a theme, um, and and also uh, composition as a theme, which is just a wonderful way to get kids a little bit more comfortable with composition. Um, I did one last year that was kind of like a role playing adventure type theme, but it was really focused on composing music. Uh, so that was really different. And, um, you know, if you can package something that's a little scary, <laughs> like composition with something that's cool around it, then it's a lot easier for them to digest. Yeah, scary for the teacher probably just as much as the kids, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right. And, you know, talking about themes, one thing that a lot of teachers talked about was not having just a piano camp, something that is is revolved. Uh, certainly you want to involve music, but if you take away the piano element, now you've opened up the camp to all kids. And so maybe you just have a general music camp. And this is kind of plays off of Sarah's music blast camp. You're learning about music. Um, or even if you're, if you're trying to include lots of different levels, you can have your older students who are a little bit more advanced, pair them up with your beginners so that it pulls in everyone kind of on the same level. So anyway, so talking themes, I think you can have just a general music theme as opposed to a piano theme. Piano specific theme. But that would right. mean that you would be marketing to more than just your studio, I guess. You'd be marketing to the local community effectively. Right, which I think some teachers have to do. Some, you know, it depends on how big your studio is or how much excitement. I mean, if you're not making it mandatory, yeah. then that is something that um, you can pull in other people though. I think Cheryl does that. Doesn't Cheryl invite, I'm not sure, but she has huge camps. Right. Huge yeah, camps. Cheryl's camps are massive. They're like 25 kids. I mean, <laughs> stress city, Tim. I think oh, but she pulls it off. She's got it down to a science. Yeah, she really yeah. does. She really does. And, she does. Um, am I right in thinking that she sells plans for camps? Or, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, she Sarah, you mentioned the maroon on a, an island. You've just got. You said you just got your materials. What? What? What have you got? And how much did it cost? And and how does that help? Um, that particular, you know, that particular camp was sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. um, she has, a, I mean, it is massive. The material in it, I mean, it's worth every single penny. Um, she's just outlined everything that you have to do. Um, you know, scheduling every single game is described. A lot of advice about, you know, how to alter things. Um, another, I think she has, I think she has like five different camps actually uh, for sale. And so, um, and it's a, a PDF package download. PDF, yeah. Yeah. And in that, uh, I mean, because obviously we've, we've talked about the fact that these camps can be so many different ages and sizes and things. Is it designed, is the material designed so that it can be adjusted to, to suit any group sort of thing? Yes, she teaches, especially for her camps, because she has, I think the majority of her studio comes in to do it, um, you know, just as like one big studio camp. It's really like it runs the gamut of ages. You can adjust it. And like Tracy mentioned, you can have, if you have maybe a game where some of the concepts are a little bit more advanced, then you, then you have some of the older kids helping the younger kids. And it's this great like little internship experience for them because if they can teach a concept, they certainly understand the concept. True. And I guess the little ease will look up to them and sort of idolize oh, yeah. them a little bit and that sort of thing. What a great idea. Yeah. So that, that's obviously a great resource for teachers who haven't done this before. They can yes, just download and I, a ready-made package sort of thing. Yes, and I just second that because, again, with my first camp, you know, thinking, you know, if you're used to doing, I had been doing group lessons, and um, if you're used to doing that, you think, oh, it's fine, I can, I can plan a camp, but it took so much time, and energy. And if I had just gotten something ready-made, it, it just would have been a big time saver. And it's tried and true, and you know it's going to be successful. And um, if you're just starting out, and especially if you're going to do it this year, mm. you need to get a plan because yeah. it'll be well worth it. 
Mm. Are, are there so, other places online that either of you have found that offer this sort of package download? Joy Marin. Joy, has, yeah. Yes. She's got um, So You Want to Be a Composer camp, which is great. I, that was actually the first camp I ever ran, and it was fabulous. Um, she's got a couple gif- different camps. Um, j- does Jennifer Fox have them in her store? I think she does. Uh, I'm not I sure. Actually, I'll check. Yeah, she may well do. Yeah. So Joy then- Marin's blog's color, colorinmypiano.com. So I'll put right? links to these on uh, Jennifer Fox at Music Teacher Resources. Uh, we'll put and Carol Ikovich. Carol Ikovich has um, her Harry Potter. That's the Harry Potter. And then there's one more. Um, it's Natalie Weber from Music Matters. Mm-hmm. Um, she has a couple of different camps for sale there as well. And okay. I'm sure that there are more out there that I'm not thinking of at the moment. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's good. It's just good to know that yeah, there is support out there, ready-made plans mm-hmm. that you can download to get started. I think it's a great, great idea that people have put these together. Okay, um, so let's go to some games. Like when, when, when I was a classroom teacher and I, I taught PE for a while, you know, I'd always have regular games that I'd use and I just knew if I had to fill 10 minutes with some group, I could always do this and everyone would love it sort of thing. I wonder if there's just some standard activities or games off the bench or on that you guys um, have used before or have heard about that's like, ah, oh, that's just a cool little thing to do on a summer camp. Or am I putting you on the spot too much? Oh, I've got a couple. Yeah. <laughs> Go for can you, it. Can Go you tell? Yeah, okay. Um, so I think that my personal favorite go-to when – and now, is this like if you're unplanned and you've got extra minutes? Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, or? that kind of a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so the game that you keep up your sleeve, the activity is Rhythm Cups because it takes no time to set up and every single kid absolutely loves it and you can – you know, make, do little fun twists on it. So if you're, if people are not familiar with, with what Rhythm Cups is, it's um, it's a, uh, what would you call it, a program or a, a concept? Um, An activity. Yeah, it's activity. in fact, I think. I'm, <laughs> it, do, do you have a red solo cup available? We I think I've got <laughs> Rhythm yeah, Cups. Yeah, there yeah. We go. I yeah, love it. I love exactly. it. Uh, having They're met wonderful. having met Wendy at the MTNA <laughs> and had a chat about it, like she's this this is fantastic. So this she's is Wendy queen, Stevens. Yeah. From Wendy Stevens' blog, which I've forgotten the name of momentarily. Com- uh, compose, compose, create. create. Doc- yep. So, um, so you just get out, you like get out the cups, open a page. Let's do some Absolutely. rhythm work. Yeah, and then get some get some of those fun little buzzers, you know, like the uh, staples, you know, that was easy button or something like that. And um, I have buttons that have car horns and, uh, you know, boinking noises, and then the kids incorporate those into the rhythm cups, and they absolutely love it. So when do they tap the buzzer? Whenever they decide. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got boings and whatever yeah. happening. All. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's fun. Um, so Staples is your office, your stationery store over there. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I haven't, I'm, I'll, I'll try and find some of these online, these buzzers. They sound like fun. I haven't, I haven't got any. You can, well, you can find them on Amazon. Um, they sell them in sets of four. And you can get ones with barnyard animal noises and things like that. And I mean... <laughs> The kids, if you put those out, they'll grab them and they'll put them in any game that you that you bring out. Great idea. Great idea. All right, we'll link some of those up. <laughs> That's great. Um, any, any other ones that you can think of? What a, it's a great idea. Um, you mean last-minute games? Um, I yeah. have, like, one outdoor game that I really like to do uh, just because the kids will beg to do it over and over again is the uh, Musical Alphabet Shooting Gallery. And... Um, it's this one actually you do need a setup for so you'd have to have it set up and like if you had extra time you can do it again but you do red solo cups um on like a what are those things called a horse you know it's that that uh uh, a sawhorse that's what they're called yeah yeah yeah. um and and you put the cups labeled a through g on there and then you use um water shooters to Uh. shoot them off so and, and you you ask a question or you show up a note or something like is it a musical yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, and you have teams. So whichever team uh, shoots the the letter down first is the winner. Uh, cool idea. I like it. That sounds uh, like fun. Yeah, yeah, it does sound like fun. Yeah, that one is really fun. That's that's a <laughs> Cheryl Wells game slash Joy Marin. One of the two of those, I think. Yeah, great. See, Tim will come volunteer for your camp. He'll be in charge of that part. <laughs> <laughs> 
right? Um, that, is, that is really up my street, that kind of a game. I love that kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, anytime, I've taught a lot in boys' schools and anytime you have anything that uses a projectile of some sort, um, you've got a winning <laughs> game, let's face it. <laughs> Uh, you have to watch out with that game and keep careful control of it because the water shooters do end up pointed at the teacher quite often. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Or maybe do it at the end of the day so everyone can just go home wet and then it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> um, and, and what about any um, on the bench or piano based activities that involve um, a few kids, maybe they're rotating around or something like that? Can you think of anything off the top of your head that you've, that you've found works well? Or do you do that kind of thing, in fact? around a piano or maybe you don't I just done, you know yeah Tracy go ahead well I was just gonna say at my duet camps I mean obviously we're playing duets um, but I don't have any like actual games where I have multiple kids there so I don't know mm. you go Sarah do you have any um, I did one yeah. uh, one thing actually Tim this is based on something that you put out um, it was the top the top 10 pop song uh, chart that you the PDF yep. that you had out on your blog and I was using that as um, a way to teach about uh, oh what's the Beatles song that you have in there is it let it be uh, yeah let it be and the other one uh, what's the other one the other one. <laughs> yeah <laughs> the other famous one <laughs> um. well we did let it be and um, so what we did is that uh, you know I had some some kids playing um, like a bass line and then I had some kids playing chords and then some kids kind of playing like a little back and forth pattern at the top ah, cool. so just teaching them to play at the same time you know was you know that's a chore yeah, yeah it's a <laughs> challenge it's great get some listening and and it's it'll yeah. be fun fun to do oh, that's great Okay, well, look, I'm loving all these kind of ideas, and I know that teachers are hopefully writing things down and they can go away and try them out. Um, let's talk now about some tips for teachers and how to avoid mistakes. Uh, I've picked up one big one from you, Tracy, which is don't go too big your first time. So that's a good mistake. I think that, that goes for business and everything, really. Start small. Yes. Can you think of any other mistakes that are easy to make that we can help teachers avoid by bringing it up now maybe to do with finances or legal or scheduling or anything like that Tracy do you want to talk about um, the issues that uh, Cheryl and I think it was Carol talked about um, the legal stuff and and safety maybe well, they just talked about the importance of having a form. Go ahead and, you know, you don't want to have any kind of accidents, but go ahead, have a medical release form, um, make sure. And what was it? Wasn't there another form or was it all? Maybe That's I'm thinking a photo that. release form, a photo release, form, which is something that you need. A, you need to have someone assigned to taking pictures because when you are marketing for your camp the next year you will want photos but when you're in the heat of the moment and you are having so much fun at your camp you're not thinking about taking pictures so assign a parent or a spouse or someone to take some pictures great tip. you will forget that yeah i really forgot that tip. yeah <laughs> and um but that really does become important later but yeah i think cheryl said that they have she has a rule they do not give any medication they don't do anything like that at camp but they have a release obviously so that you can um they could treat anyone that gets injured because she does lots of whacking things you know the projectiles so yeah, yeah. you have to have that and then a photo release so make sure that you can you do have permission to use those was there another was I there think, another um, thinking? I think that reminds me of the the idea of liability. So you know you do need to make sure that if you're going to do a camp, especially an outdoor camp, you need to have event insurance under your studio. Um, your studio should already have insurance. Um, oftentimes, it's through your homeowner's insurance if you're teaching out of your house. But you need to have you need to make sure that your insurance policy will cover you if you're doing an event with multiple students um, because you know you got to think worst case scenario if somebody were to get hurt um, it's not that you know that, that even the parents would necessarily sue you but the medical insurance company would mm. yeah absolutely well, it's a great thought and I think there is an insurer in America at least that does a lot of summer camp insurance I remember Jennifer Fox talking about it. I can't remember the name um, but I'll, I'll pop a, a thing in the show notes for it. Unless you, can you guys remember, or have you got any tips on insurers? I do believe that MTNA um, does have some insurance that do, they do um, event insurance, and I think it was cover. It would cover things like recitals or summer camps. Okay, great. 
Um, cool. And so, and le- uh, wa- waiver forms, you know, the forms we all sign to say, you know, we're not going to sue you, all this kind of stuff. Is there a standard one of those that you guys use or have you just kind of taken ones from online and made your own or have you employed a lawyer to put yours together? I have. Put- yeah, go ahead, Tracy. I did not have a lawyer put it together. I just put one together myself, just mm-hmm. created it and used the template that was online. What yeah. about you, Sarah? Um, I don't have like a, a liability safety clause yet, but it's going to go out in this year's stuff. <laughs> um, but I do have like the photo release. Um, I have a photo release and video release agreement. And I also have a payment agreement um, about cancellations. Like I have a cancellation policy that protects me a little bit more this year. So if I do have students that have signed up for camp and they decide to drop out two weeks ahead of time and um, I don't have a waiting list, um, they will, you know, they'll, they'll have to pay a certain percentage. Yep. It's good. Well, it's just good to have coverage, isn't it? Just cover yourself. Right. Not, not just for injury, but for loss of income or people pulling out or whatever it is. I think it's, that's very, very sensible. Any other things on the legal aspects or insurance aspects? I can't think of anything else. No. Cool. Well, it's good to not dwell yeah. on those things. I think you're absolutely <laughs> right. It's, you know, we've all got to think about it these days. Um, just make sure you're covered. I think that's the main thing. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's talk. Um, I'm actually in, in the next podcast. I've interviewed um, uh, some people about scaling a camp. So the next interview is all about making huge camps. Um, and I, we were just talking before the show, Sarah, and you've actually started kind of doing this yourself. So actually employing other people to help you run camps that are a little bit bigger and you're doing this with your voice students I think so can you give us any tips just for ways to get started so perhaps people have been running some smaller camps recently they're interested in scaling they can of course listen to the next podcast episode but have you got any tips yourself (laughs) about hiring teachers or you know going that next step Okay. So, um, yeah, I've been doing this, that this is my second year in scaling the voice camp. Um, for a couple of years, I did just a maximum of 10 students because I could handle that. I had somebody else who was working with me because when you're doing voice, you need an accompanist and, and a vocal coach. Um, but now I wanted to do more. So now we're taking 20 students, um, and it's a much longer camp. So that's not like huge scale yet. But the idea is that I have to build from somewhere, you know, I, five, five to 10 years down the road, I have much bigger plans in mind. Um, but I need to build the program so that I will have people interested in it. So what do you do when you're hiring people? Um, you need to find people first that you really like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that goes, that should go without saying, but work with someone who you really enjoy working with. Um, but also work with somebody who's really going to be there to support you and will be just as passionate about the event as you are. Um, I think that's really important. Um, it also helps to to find people who have a pull around the area. You know, you want to have names where they have access to students who might want to sign up. Um, so that's another aspect that I like to think about. Mm. Um, and uh, Jennifer, in in the next episode, she talked. I've, I've already recorded it. Obviously, she talked about. Um, she actually asks her staff to. They have to bring along an, a certain number of students to the camp to ensure their place as a teacher on that camp, which I thought was quite a clever way to ensure you get the right numbers and have the right number of staff. I thought that's kind of clever. Oh, I think I'm going to have to watch this next yeah, one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I definitely watch that. That's going to be episode 40. It was a really good interview. It was, it was great fun. Um, and this, this person's running camps on 22 locations in the United States. So it's like they've gone just crazy big, crazy big. I don't know how they do it because she still teaches wow. as well. Um, no, that sounds, sounds really good. Uh, and I, I think because hiring staff is one of the hardest things. I mean, scheduling people, you know, most of us can do that with a little bit of practice and experimentation. But getting the right people into your business for any business is, is, is a challenge. Um, do you have a, 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 a sort of a form that people fill out or, or set questions that you interview with? At the or moment, no. 
I mean, these are people that I know. Um, I, well, I'm working with three people this summer in the one workshop. And one of them I went to school with. Uh, actually, two of them I went to school with. Uh, so I, I feel really comfortable with them. Um, my my uh, second in command, I guess, uh, he and I have worked together. This will be your three or four, I think, on this workshop. So we feel really comfortable. And then um, there is one person who I actually haven't met in person yet, but because they are, they were so well, well recommended by mm. one of my other faculty members um, that I feel confident in, in their choices. Yeah, great. Oh, well, we wish you all the best for it. Sounds exciting. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So look, I love action plans. Um, so let's give teachers who are watching some like actual steps about how to get started. What's kind of step one, two, three, four, five, or however many um, would you recommend? How do they get started with this? Uh, I know it's running late for you guys uh, for for summer this time. I mean, you've already said, Sarah, you've you've already got your numbers are starting to build and the programs out but of course we've got teachers in australia and the um, yeah australia who will be doing summer camps at the end of the year potentially so let's let's give them a checklist where should they start well i say get a plan you've got to have a plan <laughs> can i mention <laughs> that can i say that again yeah is this what the you plan do? that you per like a, a purchased plan is that what you mean Yes, that's yep. what I would do. I okay. would I would get a plan. And I think one of the really important things to do is once you decide what you're going to do, start talking it up. And Sarah talks a little bit about this in the webinar, but even before you put anything out, start telling your students, hey, you know what? I've started planning this camp. You're not going to believe how cool it is. I can't tell you what it's about right now, but... I'll, you know, you'll know in two weeks, but start talking it up as soon as you can. Or like Cheryl was doing, you know, she's got that theme where all year she's building towards it. But you need to generate excitement. Um, and the sooner you can do that, the better. And then, of course, you got to get the word out. Um, but those are some things that I think kind of the, your first priorities is get a plan, know what you're going to do. Of course, you're going to have to secure your location and all that sort of thing. But get a plan and start talking it up because if you don't get students, it's all you know, for Nothing. not. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So grab a plan. You know, Tracy, I love what you just said there. Cause it reminds me of, you know, summer camps are kind of like movie trailers. Uh, the first movie trailers that come out are really general, aren't they? They're just like coming this summer to a theater <laughs> near you. And, and you should you've got those this. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, you get this like very general and, and you don't even really even know what the movie's about because there's just some cool stuff going on. And then they say summer 2016. Um, but you don't want to miss it. You Exactly. You don't want to yeah. miss this. And then the details start coming out a little bit at a time. It's all about building chatter. Because yeah. I think most of the, the teachers out there, I see, you know, at times... Um, posts about, oh, you know, I, I can't do summer camps. The one camp that I did just fell apart and nobody signed up and yada, yada. I have a really good feeling that it's because they were so nervous about running that summer camp that those nerves, they, they came straight at the kids and the kids are like, ah, you know, you seem unsure about this. So I, I don't think I want to participate. Mm. Yep. All right, so we've um, we've got a plan, we've got a theme and a, and a concept for what's going to happen on the camp, and I think kind of step two is to set a marketing plan and be strategic about it. Start early. Start with your coming soon trailer <laughs> idea, and then build that it up over time. <laughs> yeah, and you need great graphics. We talk a little bit about that in in the webinar. Ooh, You've good. got to have some great graphics. You've got to catch the kids' eyes and the parents too. You want the parents excited. But um, we talked a lot about Canva and um, and how to use that. And um, you know, it's. I think that's one of the most critical things that you can do. You've got to have something eye catching. Yeah. With all the important information as well, Absolutely. of course. Absolutely. Yeah. In this yeah. day and age, visuals is that's what it's about. So Canva is Canva.com, which is a graphic de online graphic design thing, which is pretty amazing, actually. It make in fact it was a Australian that invented it, I believe. I was I was hearing oh, them interviewed awesome. on a podcast recently. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, go Australia. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one of the, that's one of the most fun things that I've seen in our upbeat piano teachers um, group is that the people who have um, enrolled in group lessons 101, uh, the images that they're coming out with are amazing. And I mm. think that's 
that's like one of the biggest things that's going to draw people in, especially if you're trying to get kids uh, from outside of your studio and you're trying to do some Facebook advertising. You need something that, you know, a mom or dad or a grandparent will scroll past on their Facebook feed and go, oh, hmm. what's that? Yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah, yeah. It's more important than ever before. And um, you just can't discount it. You've got to have good graphics. Mm. You just do. But you don't yeah. have to pay thousands of dollars for graphic designers. It's actually pretty simple to be, look pretty good on, uh, on yeah. Canva. Yeah. yeah. And it's so nice. It's so nice to get feedback from other teachers. You know, you don't have to be by yourself to, to do all this on your own, you know, to get into some of the Facebook groups or, you know, I'm constantly, Sarah's really good. She has a really good eye and I'll put something together and then I'll send it to her. Fix this. What can I do? You know, just to get someone, I know what I like, but sometimes putting it together, uh, you, it just helps to get someone's input. So even if you're a teacher and you're doing it all on your own, you still can get feedback from other teachers mm. that are so willing to help you and make it better. Yeah, totally. Why why wouldn't you? Yeah, let's let's mm -hmm. share and, and give each other help. All right, so we've we've got a got a plan of action, we've got a marketing plan, we've done our graphics. What's next? What do we do? I we, like we ha to have kids, a, I guess. Yeah, well I like to have a timetable with the marketing, like uh, so you've uh, one thing that we kind of skipped over was, you know, the scheduling and setting a venue, but that kind of goes with uh, with any event or recital that you're running. We know how to do that as teachers. Mm -hmm. um, so the enrollment process is important, and I've started doing a couple different things that I think teachers might enjoy. So, yeah, you can do the traditional um, paper form enrollment. Have those enrollment forms up in your lobby or your waiting room or right in front of your door ready to grab yeah. and have something really cool looking, have your cool graphic next to it because those you want to grab the eyes of the kids and then those forms go home with the parents. Um, but I've also started doing online enrollment. Um, you don't want anything to stand between uh, a student or a parent who wants to enroll in your camp and getting them into that camp. So if they see your thing advertised on Facebook, and they realize that they have to call you or they have to email you to get the registration. That is just another hurdle for them to go through. But if you have an online form, which you can set up for free, Google Forms. Um, I know WordPress has free forms in them. Um, there's a ton of other ones, too. Mm. Uh, Google if they Forms can go are just on, easy. Anyone can yeah, use it. They're yeah. easy. Yeah. Go on Google Forms. M recreate your registration form there. Um, and then just if you don't want to mess with like automatic uh, payments attached to that, then you just say, I will send you an online invoice once I receive your registration. Yeah. Can you actually link Google Forms to an online payment system? I don't know if I've ever seen that done. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, you can certainly do it if you have a website with WordPress. You can, you can connect things up and get online right. payments. Yeah. But that's, sure a, that's another whole step. You could include a link to like a store, like a, a PayPal link a PayPal maybe or link. something. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so online, oh yeah, online forms, so easy to do. It's it's not that scary. If you've never done it before, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, so getting the enrollment process right sounds good. So we're up to step, that's step four. And then step five, I guess, is to make sure you've got the people around you to support you perhaps. And to have your ducks in a row. <laughs> get all, that's right. You've got to get your materials. You've got to get your volunteers or yeah, your, yeah. You know, your helpers. Um, Staffing, yeah. helpers, and then those final kind of bits and pieces. Um, I mean, do you offer kids, if they're there for a couple of hours, do they have a break? Uh, do they, you know, do you offer them a drink or do they, or just bring their own stuff? Everything just, so for food and drink, just bring your own. I'm a bring your own kind of person just because I don't want to deal with the allergy issue. Uh, um, yeah. Yep. yeah, so, uh, but I will occasionally um, have like juice boxes and things like that for kids. Um, I don't mess with the food aspect because I'm so busy planning everything else for camp. Um, by the time I remember the food aspect, it's like 11 o'clock the night before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you're lucky, you might have a parent maybe offer to make some cupcakes or something. That would always be nice. Or yeah, have cool. some water bottles if it's going to be outside. Have a backup plan if it is going to be outside um, because, you know, bad weather does happen. So yeah. if you're going to be outside, you want to make sure that you have a have a backup plan for that. Yeah. And have so. backup plans generally for when things go too short or too long, et cetera, I think. Always have, have those games. Yes. Have those rhythm cups. Yeah. 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 
totally. <laughs> All right. So look, I think we better wrap it up now. Um, tell us about your online webinars before we finish and where we can find out more about you guys online too. Um, well, the webinars, the Upbeat Piano Teacher webinars um, at tracyselly.com and there are several. Um, there's one that's called Technology Bootcamp for people that need to learn how to do Skype lessons or how do you use um, apps. You know, you don't have to have an iPad. Uh, there's one about building your studio if you need more students. Of course, there's Group Lessons 101. That's the one with Sarah and we cover summer camps and group lessons. So for teachers this fall, you know, if you're looking to add a group lesson or maybe just as a way to help make up lessons. We talk a lot about um, about that and we interview different teachers and you get lots of different perspectives because mm. I don't think anyone has the answer. I think we all have what works for us and that's how we learn is yeah. from hearing from other teachers. So that's, that's exactly right. Yeah. And where do, yeah. We, where do we find you online, uh, Tracy? And where, what about you, Sarah? I'm at tracyselly.com and on Facebook, you can find me on Facebook as well. Fantastic. Sarah? Yeah. So you can find me at sarahsmusicstudio.com and you can find me in all of the Facebook groups. Just look for Sarah Campbell um, and I'm always willing to chat about just about anything. <laughs> yeah. And both of you, I'm very happy to say, are part of my Inner Circle community as well online. So that's at timtoppen.com slash community. Uh, you guys are giving some great support and ideas and look, it's as you said before, it, it's all about from my perspective, it's all about sharing. It's like getting support mm -hmm. for things that you're doing. And that's what these online communities are all about. So uh, it's great. Have I forgotten to ask any vital questions that are just like crucial to this idea of summer camps? <laughs> Um, no, but oh, I do want to mention uh, we have we have a uh, a coupon code uh, for all of your listeners for Group oh, Lessons One Hundred and One. Fantastic! Or is that um, this? Yeah. And oh my gosh, why can't I remember the code right now? Tracy, help me! It's it's <laughs> let me. It's oh gosh! <laughs> no, it's right here. It's in my paper. Oh, okay. Which are Cause which I are mixed with music, which is really interesting. That's okay. Okay, so we have a code here. It is TT April 10. So that gives you a 10% off Group Lessons 101. So that, again, that's TT April 10, and we'll, um, I'm sure Tim, you'll include that in the in the blog notes. Yep. Now this is going to be close to the end of April when this comes out. So. Is that a code that we can extend into a little bit of May or is it strictly end of April? You know, I think I know someone who might be able to make that happen for okay. you. <laughs> well, you know what? Okay. All right. Hold on though. What was the code again? Tim, Tim. T -T, I mean, T, 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 April 10. All right. Let's, let's change it to T, T, May 10. Cause okay. sometimes the sometimes it's hard to extend the coupon code. So I would hate to give everyone the wrong thing. So I'll go in and just make sure I create right, a new beautiful. one. All right. Sounds so, great. Well, thank you very much. That's fantastic. TT Nathan. Okay. Always good. All right. Lovely. Well, Absolutely. Look, I reckon we'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much, very much for being on the show. It's been great fun as always. Thank you for having us. This has been fun. No problem. And yes, it was great to chat. And uh, looking forward to meeting you both finally at some stage. We, we're we're going to get together. I know it. Um, when Maybe I well, when you. Year. Yeah, when you're running the projectiles section of Sarah's <laughs> camp. Yeah, guys, come on over to Campbell Farms and then we'll we'll do some like rhythm shooting galleries and stuff. Sounds, sounds good. You've got, me, got me hooked. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you so much. We'll um, sign off there and um, stay in touch. Okay. Thanks. All right. Bye. See you guys. See ya. All right. Stay on the line. Stay on the line. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm actually interested, if you've got like five minutes, um, I'm keen to do a completely off the cuff little interview about the business side of what you guys are doing. Um, because I'm, if you're interested, because I'm, I'm doing a keynote, I'm doing three keynote presentations at a music technology education conference over here in Australia. And my topic is about um, uh, ways technology can um, open up avenues for um, careers in the future for our students and so my my premise is that a lot of the teaching we do is all about um, teaching performance and yet the actual reality of a performance career is just you know this yeah. big Little. so so I wanted to do some case studies with people who are teachers like you guys who have gone you know what I'm gonna start making some money from online 
online ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tracy, I've used you before when I've talked um, in, in regard to your webinars. It's just like, here's Tracy. Mm-hmm. And I remember when you first approached me, you were like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to try it anyway and see what happens. I am still that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, I, and so I think you're you a real inspiration for a lot of people just to say, um, you know, this, this is someone that just learned on the job and has gone and done these amazing things. So, um, one, have you got time or we can reschedule it? We don't have to do it now, but it will literally be sort of five minutes. And it was the sort of thing I would love, love to use a couple of video case studies in my, in my talk about people who have gone and done some cool things and how we can encourage our students to think about yeah. online business. Yeah, I've got time. If Sarah does, I can yeah, do it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, All right. I just did, um, I, I don't know if this helps you out, Tim, but I just did a talk at a local college about being a music entrepreneur. So that was like, I was Ooh. actually talking to the college kids who are, you know, being told practice, practice, practice. And I'm going, I mean, like, oh no, learn business, learn business. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's talk about, let's, let, that, yeah. that was a great little quote that you just did then. Um, <laughs> I can redo it. We can. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I've, I've left the recorder going anyway. So, yeah, um, good. Tracy and Sarah, you guys, uh, sort of, I love, uh, let's, what am I going to say here? I'm doing this off the cuff now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so look, guys, I've got Tracy and Sarah with me here. Um, these guys are both teachers, uh, piano teachers, uh, trained probably quite classically as most of us were, but who are now not only running their studios, but have also gone into online business. So Tracy, can you tell us why, uh, and I'm sp- speaking to Tracy first, because I know you kind of started up this idea. Why did you start doing these online webinars? Well, it, you know, it started because we moved. My husband got a job in a different city. And uh, so while I did keep some of my students as Skype students, and that was great, I was stepping out of my comfort zone um, and I was determined to do something to keep my business going because I wanted to have a project, you know, all that stuff. But I needed a different way to find some income and I just wanted a different project. It, Mm. It wasn't even all about the money, it was just, I'm a project person. I just, I like doing something. And so I saw someone online who was doing this with regard to books. And um, he was interviewing different authors who were really successful and trying to encourage people that wanted to write a book. And I thought, well, I could do that with piano teaching. My background is in television. I, um, well, I studied, I did study music at school, but I, mm. I ended up going the meteorology route. So I, I was a meteorologist and then I worked as a, as a news anchor and I thought I could interview people. That would be a lot of fun and I could interview them about piano and this would be great. You know, kind of the idea was to sort of like an online conference. It's it, not everyone can afford to go to a conference mm. and this would be a good way to give teachers access to other information. So that's kind of how it all started, but putting it together and figuring all that out, that was a whole different ball game. Yeah, we had a lot of back and forth with our questions. I remember you asking me, how do I do this and what's this? Oh, and, yes. Um, uh, but it was great. I was really happy to help. And, and you've ended up with this fabulous product and you've now gone on to um, work with Sarah, who's also on the call um, in doing your sort of second or is it even your third um, lot of webinars? <laughs> Yeah, this is the third one. And I just thought to change it up, it would be nice to have a co-host. But what I didn't realize was how fun for me it would be to have a co-host. Just, you know, it's kind of that thing we talk about as a teacher, you kind of can get isolated at home or in your studio. And just to have someone to bounce ideas off of has been wonderful. And Sarah has just turned out to be just even so much better than I expected. I just, we have really different skill sets. And them combined has been just a perfect combination but all that wasn't really planned was it sarah it just kind of worked out that way it just kind of worked out that way and um you know like you said we've got different skill sets but being able to even just you know via email or text or on on facebook bounce ideas off of one another um to say hey can you uh can you look at this what do you think um you know, can you can you take an edit on this? Um, you know, or if you toss a graphic my way and say fix this <laughs> or something like that. So that's kind of, you know, yeah. it's it's a really great experience to be a part of. And Sarah, you've uh, you've you've had a blog for some time, and you're now doing some other kind of business things, and you're even speaking to students about the importance of business versus performance. Can you tell us just a bit about that? 
Sure. Um, so like you mentioned, I started blogging a few years ago um, and I actually spent tons of time doing it. You know, I was blogging five times a week. Um, I, know, I know all for, about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For the first, I think, year, um, I was almost five days a week, every wow. single week. Um, it and, and people were going, what are you doing? Are you nuts? You're spending all this time doing something and you're not getting paid for it. And I said, look, I have a plan. I don't know exactly what that plan is yet, <laughs> but I know that I have to establish myself and I have to create original content. And that's how it started. Um, and lo and behold, a few years later, I'm being asked to do different projects. So, you know, Tracy, uh, you know, got me into the upbeat piano teachers. And now I've started doing, um, I've been doing a couple different talks uh, at some local colleges. Um, so I've been doing things um, like speaking to uh, music education majors, um, you know, coming at them from not a performance standpoint, but from a music entrepreneur standpoint and really talking about like the ins and outs of running a music studio or, you know, doing, um, you know, maybe looking into like blogging and selling things online and that mm. kind of thing. Yeah, that's so important these days, I think, for, for everyone to have it. Uh, it's for kids to generally, I guess, leaving school, have an all-round appreciation of business and technology and all those kinds of things. Uh, it is, and I think, it is so important. Were you going to finish up what you were going to say, Sarah? Well, I, what was interesting is that I just did this talk two weekends ago um, at, um, at my alma mater, actually. And um, one of the things that I think that most of the music programs everywhere, I can't even think of a single mu music program that teaches this. They do not teach the business side of things. I think it's a huge mistake on on the point uh, on the part of colleges. I think it's something that's going to be changing um, because we can pre prep people to perform as much as we want to, but there are only so many performance jobs out there, and they are going to have to make ends meet somehow. So I think we really need to start teaching music business. Absolutely, yeah. Yes. And just and, and go on, Tracy. You were going to say something. Well, before. it doesn't matter what you end up doing. Any aspect of of anyone's life really is going to involve business. I wish that I had taken business. My son is in high school and we're saying, okay, we don't know what you're gonna study in college, but your minor will be business. Mm, mm. Because you just don't know. And you know, opportunities are changing constantly. I mean, before we moved, you know, two years ago, I never would have thought that I've got this online business and, and doing all this, I never would have dreamed of it. And I've figured out those little steps, but it's been harder. I think having that business background prepares you mm. for whatever comes up. Mm. So, well, yeah, congratulations. So do you've done, you know, you've done fantastic things. And not only obviously is it a great income base for you, but it's helping teachers all around the world. Um, so congratulations. And just out of, out of interest, about how many did you end up, uh, you know, how many subscribers did you end up getting on your, your very first series? Can you remember? The very first, well, you know, I had no idea how many um, we would even sell. You know, I, I mean, I literally had no idea. So my goal was 100. I thought, okay, if we sell 100, I'm going to be thrilled. Yeah. And we sold 99. Oh, fantastic. So yeah. That was exciting. And we've sold more than that mm -hmm. on this one. So yeah. it's, you know, we learn. It's a, it's a learning curve. But um, but it's been more successful than I than I expected, which is kind of nice. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Oh, it's great. Well, yeah. congratulations to both of you for all you're doing. Um, and thanks for um, having this little chat with me. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, right. Tim. Welcome. <laughs> All right. See ya. If the idea of a piano teacher's community where you get to access the best educational resources, rub shoulders with expert teachers from around the world, and have immediate access to feedback for any of your questions, then Inner Circle membership is for you. The Inner Circle is my private community of piano teachers from across the globe who share a commitment to creating and delivering the most inspiring, modern, and progressive learning experiences for their students. Membership is now open, so head to timtopham.com forward slash community to find out more and get involved today. I can't wait to see you on the inside.